day. God, thank you for the opportunity to come to the school where we can learn more about you, God, and worship you freely. Lord, I invite your spirit into this room. I pray that you would just open the minds and the hearts of all these people here. God, I pray you would just be the only distraction in this room, that everything else would just be banished. God, I pray that you would just speak to us through Mr. Bullard. I pray that all your words come through him. Lord, I pray for the rest of this day that it is blessed and that we are only distracted to you. In your name I pray, amen. Hey, Tim. morning. Thank you for getting your notes out and ready to go. <clears throat> My leading idea today, I know you take notes, so you write that down. My leading idea, idea today is my heart is my problem. My heart is my problem. That's actually part one of, I'll give you part two of my leading idea as we go along here. I've never done this before. I've been, I told my Algebra 2 class this morning, I love those kids. Um, we get along great. That's a great bunch of students. I enjoy my first hour class. And um, so they, they're praying for me. I just asked Crimson to pray for me. Thank you, Crimson. I know she does. Um, so I've been preparing for this for a couple of months and thinking about it. And so I'm, I'm actually a little nervous. I, uh, I, I've never sat down. I just feel like talking with you this morning. I said that, and somebody said, a fireside chat. Well, we don't have a fire, but I don't, I'm not preaching today. I'm not a preacher. I never preach. But uh, I just want to talk with you today. And so just sitting down, I want to share some things with you. My leading idea is my problem is my heart, and I would suggest that your problem is your heart as well. My problem is my heart. I'll give you part two of that later. Write down Proverbs 4.23. A lot of you know Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it, your heart, are all the issues of life. For out of it are the issues of life. <clears throat> so what about our hearts? I've been thinking about this a lot lately. And, and, I, and my, my heart is my problem. My, heart, my problem is not the world. My problem is not the things that are going on in this world. My problem is not other people. Um, all those things can, there's, there are problems with those things, but my, my problem is my heart. It's um, desperately wicked, deceitful above all things. My problem is my heart. So I want to talk about a couple of ways that uh, our problem comes out of our heart. And uh, Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart. To guard is like a sentinel, a guard at a door. A lot of you have been to Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm leaving this Thursday to go to D.C. with the sixth graders. I'm excited about that trip. So I've been, you know, not in the White House, never been in the White House, but I've been to it. And I've seen that guard. And they say, I don't know if it's true now, they say if there's a Marine, United States Marine Corps, if there's a Marine at that door, I don't remember which one it is, but that means the president's in the White House. And he is guarding that door. Nobody goes in. Nobody comes out. They go by him. Um, if I tried to get in, the, uh, it would not be a pretty picture. Okay? I would be detained or injured or killed, depending on how belligerent I was. Okay? Guard your heart. There's, put a sentinel, a marine, at the door of your heart. And, and guard everything that goes out and everything that comes in. But my problem is my heart. We'll talk about the solution at the end. Um, I've done a lot of reading on, on digital devices and, and um, our phones. You, you all have phones, right? So a digital device. <clears throat> we have a, several problems with our hearts. What I want to talk about today is, is what goes out of your heart, what we need to guard against, and what comes back into our heart, what we need to guard against. Guard your heart with all diligence. My heart is my problem. Guard your heart with all diligence. 
One of the ways that my heart is evidenced is through my phone, through your phone, and and what comes out of you through your phone. Talking about social media, typically Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, not so much for students. That's for old people. That's for moms and grandmas who want to show off pictures of their kids. Uh, There's some other social media apps, but it's still interestingly enough. Uh, TikTok is one. You can do some really you know, mean, uh, mean spirited videos on TikTok. It can really be bad. Um, but Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, probably the three major ones that students use, in which uh, students do uh, really mean things to each other. So it's it's really a problem. I've I've, I've read a lot. This this book is uh, Screens and Teens. Um, interesting book. There's some just what 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 teens and screens. What you do on and with your screens, and you you're 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 told some lies through that. Number one, lie number one is you are the center of your universe. Well, no, you aren't. You're made to believe you are. The world is all about you. The world is not all about you. The world's not all about me. The world's all about God's glory. But we're told the lie that it's all about me. Okay. Lie number two, I deserve to be happy all the time. <laughs> no, you don't deserve to be happy. You deserve to go to hell. You do not deserve to be happy. You deserve to go to hell. Why? Because your heart, your heart is sinful. Okay? You don't deserve to be happy. That's a lie. You say, well, I, need to, I should be happy. Well, I'm, I like being happy too. That's one of the three things I pray I pray lots of things in the morning. I'll, I'll share that with you later maybe. But I, I pray that God will give me happiness. I read a book entitled Happiness by Randy Alcorn. It's a great book on what Scripture says about happiness. So I understand happiness, but that's, I don't deserve to be happy. God is not existing to make me happy. That's a lie that we believe through our phones. Uh, lie number three, I must have choices. I have to have choices. Lie number four, I am my own authority. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> And neither am I. I'm not your authority. I'm not my authority. Um, God is our ultimate authority, and he delegates that authority to parents and others. So, interesting book there, Screens and Teens. Uh, Another book is um, 12 Ways Your Phone is Changing You. Uh, We are addicted to distraction. We ignore flesh and blood. We don't deal with people anymore. We deal with our screens. We crave immediate approval. We feed on what is produced. We become consumers rather than producers. Um, We become what we like. We get lonely. We get comfortable in our secret vices, our secret sins, because our cell phones, 12 ways your phone is changing you. Um, We we lose meaning in life. It's just interesting. Uh, all kinds of things that our phones are doing to us. We, we start living uh, the, the unreal instead of doing what's real. We, we, do, we do virtual things rather than doing things. Uh, camp, sorry, Camp. I, I don't know if he likes me talking about him in chapel or not, but sorry, bud. Uh, camp watches just videos on dirt bike riding. It's just, it's like... You know, how many videos are there on dirt bike riding, you know? Uh, there's super cross, and it just, it just goes on. And some are actually pretty good, but it's just, you know, I don't mind that, though. I really don't mind it because I know what he's doing. He's, he's watching those to get better because he rides dirt. I see, now, if he just watched dirt bike videos, I'd say, camp, put that stinking phone down and go out and ride your dirt bike. But he does that. He watches videos in order to get better. And so he has three dirt bikes, a couple of 250s and a little 100 and and he goes and rides, and none of his brothers can keep up with him now, or his brothers-in-law, because he's really good at it now, okay? So I'm, I'm okay with virtual things, watching things, as long as you go out and do things, do, do, do life, okay? If your phone is changing you, be aware of that, okay? Um, very, very interesting. So, uh, 12 ways your phone is, is changing. You just need to be aware of the fact that it is happening, okay? 
Yeah, it's just a phone. Well, I know it is. I have a phone too, right? I, okay, I understand this, okay? But uh, there's some things going on there, okay? One of them is, um, is um, this, this book is uh, called The Dark Side of Technology. I've, re- I've read a lot of books on these things. It's a very real topic in, for today's children. I have, I have 10 children, okay? They all have cell phones. I have 14 grandchildren, two on the way. I'll have 16 grandchildren soon. None of them have cell phones yet. They will. They will all have cell phones. So I need to know as a father and a grandfather how to help my kids and my grandkids and say, wait a second, wait a second. You're going to have a phone. That's okay. The problem is not my phone. This, this is not my problem. What's my problem? What's my problem? My heart. This is not my problem. What comes out of me through this is a problem. But that comes out of my heart. Jesus said that numerous times. Out of the heart. Okay? Flow along with cyberbullying. This has a, a whole chapter on cyberbullying. Okay? This is a, the dark side of technology. Uh, really interesting. Very, very good. But this chapter is on cyberbullying. It's uh, what, what students do to each other. Girls and boys surveys, statistics, how meanness, just just being mean and hateful. God never intended us to be hateful to each other, never. And yet we do, because we can. I can just fire off a Snapchat or Instagram or make a nasty TikTok video, and I can be really mean through my phone and cyberbullying. It's a very real problem. It's a very real problem today. It's a problem here among you, okay? God never intended that. But it's not my phone's fault. A phone cannot be involved in cyberbullying. My heart is involved, the source of cyberbullying. There's a whole list of ways that students bully each other. They even have names for them. Flaming, denigration, bash boards, impersonation, outing. Trickery, exclusion, harassment, happy slapping, it's interesting, text wars, online polls, images and videos. Uh, quite a list of ways that students are just, just mean to each other. Scripture says a lot about being kind. My problem, though, is my heart. I get angry, I get ticked off, I get upset, I'm jealous. And so I use my phone. I don't. You, some of you do. You use your phone to just let the ugly, mean-spiritedness out of your sinful heart. And you deserve to go to hell. So do I, okay? Because of my sin. I deserve to go to hell. So, so guard your heart. I, I told you I was nervous, right? You all are going, oh my gosh. What's he... Thank you very much, Miss Bill. Did you get up on the wrong side of the bed today and you're upset with us? I'm not, okay? I've been, I've been thinking about this for a couple of months. I just, I just, I'll, I'll, you'll see when I get to the end, okay? Why? Why this today? So, so cyberbullying, you, check your heart, okay? Just what's in your heart? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Be ready because when you look in your heart, you go, Yuck. Yeah, that's just nasty. My heart is just full of sin, okay? And it comes out through my phone to others in just mean spiritedness, okay? Cyber. So guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So my problem is my heart, and I need to guard what comes out of it. That's really not the solution. Scripture says to guard your heart. We'll get to the solution shortly. Okay. We should also guard what comes into our heart. I should guard what comes out, not let that meanness and ugliness that is in my heart at times towards other people. Don't let that come out of you. And we do it anonymously. We'll 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 say things via some meanness, text or Instagram or something that we would never say to someone's face. We're, we just we wouldn't be that mean, although some people are. They're even that mean, okay? Um, but but we, we, are, we, we tend to do it more 
on our phones than we do in person. So that's the problem, though, is my heart. The other one is guarding what comes in. Pornography. It's the primary issue. It's pornography. I've done a lot of uh, reading and studying about pornography. I made the mistake once I was at a church talking to parents, and I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm studying pornography. And I went, I got away. That really came out bad. <laughs> it's not what I mean, okay? But I, am, I have studied pornography extensively. So let me show you some things. This book, uh, How Pornography Harms. I want to talk to you about pornography, guarding your heart. How pornography harms. Gosh, I could go on and on and on. Pornography actually rewires the brain. It's fascinating to me. I've studied a lot. The youth and teen years are highly impressionable years. During this time, people develop their understanding of sexual relations. They establish their identity. and They begin to establish the ability to delay gratification. That's the mark of maturity. A mature person can delay gratification. An immature person has to have it now. That's what, and teens, you should be establishing the ability to delay gratification, to, to wait Instead of having to have it now, we are uh, wired. For this. Smartphones have changed the game. A lot of times I leave my phone locked up. Um, I had all my apps blocked. It helps me have no means of accessing pornography that would help. Uh, such a useful device, a phone, can also be so destructive. Part of pornography and part of that cyberbullying is sexting. Sexting is primarily sending nude pictures uh, of yourself to others. It's very common. I, I can show you the stats. I know the stats on how common that is, what percentage of young people do that. It's very common. It's part of dating now. Just take a picture of yourself nude, send it to him or her. It's extremely common. It's called sexting. Uh, that's really dangerous. It does a lot of things. It's also a felony. That's the, uh, if you're under 18, that's the production of child pornography. I'm not making this up, okay? I know the uh, chief of the cyber crimes in Edmond, Oklahoma. Heard him speak on several occasions. Uh, extremely intelligent man. And uh, whew, he'll scare the snot out of you. Um, it's, it's the production of child pornography, and if you send it, it's the distribution of child pornography. Both of those are felonies. Uh, and you say, well, it's not on my phone anymore. Yes, it is. And uh, he knows how to get it off of your phone. I deleted it. It's still there, okay? And it can be found uh, and used to prosecute it. I, I'm not saying, I, that's just another reason. That's sexting, sending nudes of yourself is um, highly, highly damaging in a lot of ways. Um, it's also illegal. And uh, you can be convicted of a felony. I, I'm not trying to scare you. But, but that's, it is the truth. Another type of sexting is uh, explicit sexual talk, talking about sexual body parts, sexual body functions, and then just, just typically that's texting and other modes of sending messages back and forth, but it's called sexting. Uh, very, very damaging, very hurtful, very common. It's done a lot, okay? My problem is my heart. Pornography is just an outgrowth of that. Pornography undermines God's design for sexual in intimacy in every conceivable way. Pornography, uh, new pictures, actually they're videos now. It used to be pictures when I was a kid. Uh, Playboy magazine was about the only outlet for pornography when I was in school. Um, by the way, I, sh I should say, I, I, have never, I have never seen pornography. I have never looked at a magazine. I have never seen a picture on my phone or computer. I have never seen a video. I have never seen pornography. And the only reason for that is God has protected me. If, if I would have had a phone when I was in high school, I would have been in trouble because I know my heart. I am so thankful I didn't have a phone in high school. That would have been a disaster for me, okay? I had very little self-control in high school. I was very immature. I was very insecure, 
My word for myself, when I was in high school, I was just a jerk. But God saved me and protected me. I made some decisions. I, I, I knew my heart. I had a full ride. I had a, I had a full scholarship, room, board, and tuition to MIT when I was in high school. Massachusetts Institute of Technology in, in Boston. I had a full ride to MIT based on my ACT score, my GPA. Um, I knew if I went to MIT, I would be in trouble because I knew my heart. And I thought, no way. Josh, if you go to MIT and have no restrictions, no restraints, no control because you don't have any self-control, you're in bad shape. And I knew it. I ended up going to Bob Jones University. First of all, I realized that's where God wanted me to go. But you know what the really reason, the reason I went to Bob Jones, I, God wanted me to, and I knew that, and I did. But I knew, <laughs> I knew I couldn't be with girls. I knew it. They were strict, super strict, ridiculously strict for an 18 to 22-year-old. But I went there because I thought, I need help. Okay? I, I, if I'm free to do what I want to do, that's not a pretty picture because my heart is my problem. And I went to Bob Jones University, and what happened in those four years is the Lord grew me up. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, I came out on the other side of those four years really very mature, spiritually mature. I'd learned to, the spiritual disciplines, which we'll talk about soon. So, maturity. Uh, how pornography harms. I started my John Fobert professor. He was. He moved colleges. Now, he was at Oklahoma State University. His research is on pornography and uh, the social ills of pornography. John Fobert. Um, uh, went, to, went to my church, Faith Bible Church in Edmond. So I know Dr. Fobert. Um, heard him speak several times. Interesting book here by, John, uh, by Josh McDowell. I love Josh McDowell. Um, it's called The Bare Facts. 39 Questions Your Parents Hope You Never Ask About Sex. <laughs> That's an interesting title. 39 Questions... Your parents hope you never ask about sex. So this is questions about sex and how you answer your children when they ask and help them. How does pornography really affect me? Okay. Since you're living in a culture in which pornography is more common than America's favorite pastime, you may be tempted to think that porn is no big deal. You may say, it's not hurting anybody, it's just for fun. I'll quit later. In fact, many young people rationalize that they can use porn before marriage and then stop after marriage because they will have the real thing. Sex is, is virtual. It's, it's not real via porn on a screen. But when you get married, sex is real intimacy with your husband or wife. And so you just well, you will quit using pornography and enjoy the God-given sexual intimacy of a husband-wife. Well, the real, reality is it doesn't work that way. I didn't say that. The reality is it doesn't work that way. That's not what happens, okay? If you believe that lie, you're in for some trouble. Even a video on questions you, when do you stop enjoying sex? Can I, can I use sex to keep my boyfriend? What is real love? Interesting questions. This book is uh, called Wired for Intimacy. I have more notes than this one than any. This is written by Dr. Struthers, William Struthers, a, um, a psychologist actually, a neuropsychologist, um, did his PhD work in neuroscience. He studied the brain. Okay, his his field is brain. He's a neuroscientist. Okay, uh, Dr. William Struthers, a professor at Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, up by Chicago. I, I this book is fascinating to me. Um, the result is the repeated exposure to pornography and the ob objectification of the female body changes the way our brains see each other. It actually physically changes the brain. I believe that pornography is the medium that degrades both men and women while offering the lie of on-demand sexual fulfillment. It's not true, but it's what it says. Pornography dishonors the image of God in an individual by treating him or her as a sexual object to be consumed directly or indirectly. The human body is an incredibly complex and beautiful creation, and our sexuality is one of the more complex aspects of who we are, not one of the simpler aspects. Our sexuality is meant to be embodied mutual exchange between husband and wife as they discover God's love. Pornography 
shapes and rewires us in such a way that we become, we become unable to see women as we should. Women no longer are people, human beings created in God's image, whom God loves, who will live forever, who have incredible potential, who are very desirable. Jesus died for you. You are eternal. You will spend eternity somewhere. You are a beautiful, beautiful creation. And pornography rots that because you do not see the other individual as a beautiful person created in God's image. You see it as a body for your pleasure. That is an object to be enjoyed for my pleasure. That's what pornography does. And it actually, it actually changes the physical brain. It's called neuroplasticity. Your brain is, is pl it has plasticity, it's soft, malleable, it's movable, but pornography actually makes it more ceramic, hard, unchangeable. Because of the, I, I could go on and on, because of the chemicals that are released in the brain at, 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 at sexual climax, especially via a screen with a virtual image, not a real person, the, the chemicals that are reduced, reduced excuse me, um, released in the brain and the pathways that they travel to the pleasure center of your brain, it's actually changing your physical brain. They do brain scans on people that are on pornography, and they look just like, uh, they look just like brains that are on uh, uh, meth and, uh, methamphetamines. A, a brain on porn looks like a brain on meth. It actually is addicted to it. Okay? A healthy brain that's not addicted is different. The, 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 the circuitry in the brain is physically different. Fascinating to me. Okay? Wired for intimacy, how pornography hijacks the male brain. And we do it over and over and over again. Repeated exposure to pornography causes a one-way neurological superhighway where a man's mental life is over-sexualized and narrowed. It is hemmed in on either side by high containment walls making escape nearly impossible. This neurological superhighway has many on-ramps, things that stimulate it. The mental life is fixated on sex, but it is intended for intimacy. We were intended for intimacy with a husband or wife. That's what God created us for. That's one of the things God created us for. He created us for His glory. We, we demonstrate and exalt His glory as we experience intimacy with a husband and wife. We weren't created for sex. We were created for His glory. Our husband-wife relationship is a picture of Christ in the church. He says that in Colossians and Ephesians, okay? And yet pornography hijacks and abuses it. Actually, pictures of the brain, okay? A brain on porn and a brain not on porn. They're different. It actually physically rewires the brain. Re uh, wired for intimacy. God wired us. He made us for intimacy. We have sexual drives. We have sexual desires. That's God-given. That's good. It's for His glory, it's for mutual enjoyment between husband and wife. But pornography hijacks all of that and ruins it. It's amazing what happened. The stats on, on, on what happens in marriage after addiction to pornography and, what, and the, the struggles. There's, uh, it's, it's, it's shocking to me. It's just shocking. This is an interesting book, My Father's Stash. It was written by Jerry Wright. Lives here in Oklahoma City. I know Jerry. He's been here to school several times. Jerry Wright, my father's stash. He found his father's stash of Playboy magazines. I was instantly changed in a profound moment of curiosity and discovery. Little did I know what lay ahead. He wrote this book, Escaping the World of Secrets, Shame, and Guilt. My father's stash, Jerry Wright. It's just a story of how how, what pornography did to him and did to his marriage, and then how the Lord saved him out of that. It's a beautiful story by Jerry Wright. Uh, this is an interesting book. I went to a conference in Charlotte, North Carolina in 2017, uh, about four years ago, and the, the title of the conference was uh, Set Free. This is my notebook that I kept from the conference. Set Free, meaning set free from pornography. It was hosted by Josh McDowell Ministries. There's about 900 people there. Huge Hyatt Regency in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Three-day conference. Just the, 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 
the people who know and study about pornography were at that conference in Charlotte, North Carolina, four years ago. Fascinating. Um, it, was, it was unbelievable. Okay? I, I was just like, I, I mean, the stuff they shared, I'm being very guarded with you. I'm not telling you a lot of details, sexual details, and I won't be inappropriate for me to do so. At that conference, they just let it out. They just said it. It was like, oh, my gosh. Okay? 900 people there, mostly pastors, youth pastors, um, ministry, campus crusade, uh, navigators, stumo, those kinds of college ministries. Those folks were there at that conference. And just because pornography is such a gigantic problem, the stats are shocking. This, uh, this study was released at that conference at the Set Free Summit in Charlotte, North Carolina, four years ago. This was written in 2016 and released in 2017. It's called The Porn Phenomenon. The Porn Phenomenon. It's just all stats. If you look at the book, it's just, it's just uh, pie charts and graphs. It's just, that's all it is, statistics. It's all statistics on the use of pornography in the U.S., okay? Oh, all about men, women, youth, old, it's on and on and on. The porn phenomenon by the Barna Research Group. It's the largest study ever done on pornography uh, to date, okay? So this, this into, uh, uh, what's his name, Kinnaman, uh, well, I can't remember his first name, Kinnaman, um, the president of Barna Research presented this study and just, uh, it was, I was just shocking. It's like, really? Is it really that pervasive? Because it was, Again, I, I've used the word shocking several times, haven't I? On the matter of, uh, this is by Mark Regneris, um, who studies the, the uh, how, how sexual relationships are, are pursued between men and women, and the cost, it's kind of a weird way to say it. Mark Regneris is a very good author. He said this, on the matter of men and pornography, the data suggests that you may not be able to flee far enough. You may not be able to flee far enough. However far away you can get from pornography, that's probably not far enough. You need to get a little further away. The data suggests between men and, and pornography that you may not be able to flee far enough. You really need to flee. I kept a notebook at the conference, and it's just, it's just filled with... Uh, pluck eye, a tool for self-control, join the movement, fight the new drugs, fightthenewdrug.com, pornography and sex trafficking, covenant eyes, a filter for your phones and digital devices, um, uh, pornischillingme.com, awaken.com, healing for the soul, uh, his porn, your pain, what porn does to a woman when her husband, there's a whole gigantic ministry for women whose husbands are on porn. Because what that does to the woman is horrible. And so there's a gigantic ministry to ladies. And how, how do, ladies, how do you deal with that when your husband is... Integritynow.org, be broken, our mission, healing sexual brokenness by God's grace, one story at a time. Proven men, be on guard, Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart. Dirty girls ministries, Help, hope, and healing for women with pornography and sexual addiction. Sexual, uh, pornography is growing for women. It used to be solely or almost ex exclusively a male problem. Now it's a female problem. The reason for that is money. The male market was saturated. Everybody used porn, so there were no more customers. Did you know the income, the money generated by pornography, the money generated by the pornography industry, you say, well, I thought porn was free. I can get it on my phone for free. I don't pay for it. Yeah, but there's advertisements, and there, you can buy pornography. There, the money generated by the pornography industry in the United States generates more money than the four major uh, sport, sports combined. NFL, MLB, Major League Baseball, NBA, and NH, NHL, National Hockey League. The, all, you think of the pre-COVID, okay? I don't know how much money they're making now because the stadiums are all empty. But pre-COVID, think about the money that the NFL, NBA, MLB, and NHL generated a year. The, the income from pornography is more than all of those major sports combined annually. And so what happened was the male market was saturated because everybody was using porn. And so they started going after females. They started producing female porn. It was all a marketing technique. 
So now the females using porn is on the rise and, and is a growing problem. Uh, addiction training, hopequestgroup.org. I, I could go on and on and on on the ministries that are out there helping people recover from pornography. It's just, it just goes on and on and on. There's a gigantic set of ministries to help people uh, get out of the, the, the dangers and the damages of pornography. It's, 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 I tell people I would rather have a rattlesnake in my kids' rooms than have unfiltered digital device that they could get to pornography. I think they would have a better chance surviving if they had a rattlesnake in the room than they could if they had porn in their room. Porn will kill you. Porn will kill a marriage. The uh, three young men that have married my daughters, excuse me, four young men that have married four of my daughters, they met with me before. I said, I said, I need to ask you a question. I said, what is your connection with pornography? Before I gave them permission to marry my daughters, I said, pornography will kill you, it will kill my daughter, and it will kill the marriage. You're not getting married. You're, I am not giving you my daughter if pornography is in your life because it will kill you, it will kill her, I don't want to kill my daughters, and your marriage will not survive. I've had that conversation with four young men who have married four of my daughters, okay? And I still ask them. I still ask them. I had lunch or breakfast with Aaron, Kylie's husband, a couple weeks ago. I had breakfast with Brant, my oldest son. I asked him. I asked Camp. Camp, I, pornography, your friends. I name his friends. I know who they are. I talk about you guys. Does he use porn? Does he, what's he do? What's he do? You're over at Bryce's house. That's a cousin. I can say Bryce's name. But what, what's going on, Camp? What? Okay. Do any guys use porn? No. Okay. Camp doesn't give me names. I don't ask. All right. It's a huge problem. So what's the answer? Write this down. This is part two of my leading idea. My heart is the problem. The answer is the gospel. I'm a sinner, and so are you. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have a debt to pay. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Separation from God forever. It's a long time, guys. It's a long time. <clears throat> But thank the Lord, God loved me enough to send his son. Romans 5, but God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, I'm a sinner, Christ died for me. Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty, death, for my sins. And he paid them all. Jesus loved me enough to die for me. And he loved you. He loves you enough to die for you, to pay for your sins. By God's grace through faith, when I was seven years old, I believed in Jesus, worked for me, and I accepted his forgiveness. And God saved me, saved me from my horrible, rotten, sinful, hell-deserving heart. God saved me. I am so, God changed me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. He changed me. He changed my desires. I've never seen pornography. I don't want to see pornography. I want to stay away from por pornography. I want to not see pornography. I have filters on my phone. I have filters at home. I don't want pornography to get to me. I know it'll kill me. I don't want that. It'll kill my wife. I've pictured myself saying, Janelle, I'm looking at naked women on my phone. I'm not, but I have pictured myself sitting down with Janelle and saying, Janelle, I love you. You're a wonderful wife, and I'm looking at naked women on my phone. And I'm visualizing what I would like to do with them. No. I don't want to have that conversation with Janelle. And so I guard my heart. I don't, I, don't want any, I don't want any part of it. I don't want to say that to my kids. I don't want to say, guys, I'm finished with your mom. I'm tired of her. She's 60 years old. She's not as cute as she was when she was 24. And I can look at pictures of 24-year-olds all day long on my phone. I'm done with your mother. I'm leaving. 
I don't want to have that conversation. By God's grace, I never will. Okay? I'm, I'll be 60 next month. You go, well, you're old, Mr. Buller. That's not a problem. Hey, I could tell you person after person after person. Anybody heard of Ravi Zacharias? Christian leaders? I heard Alistair Begg on the radio. Camp and I listened to him. I listened to him. I don't know if Camp listens to him or not. It's on the radio. Alistair Begg, most every morning. He said, I don't want to die a dirty old man. If I, I, I don't want to die a dirty old man. I'm not a dirty man right now. I don't want to die a dirty old man. And that temptation is still there. Because I have a sinful heart. But God saved me from that. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So many of you have already come to that point that I came to when I was seven, and God saved me. God has saved you. Some of you haven't. You need Christ. You need to be saved from your sins. I needed to be saved from my sins. You need to be saved from your sins. The only answer to my problem, which is my heart, is the gospel. Jesus Christ died for me and for you, but you have to accept that by grace through faith. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, call the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. That's your only hope. Your only hope, both in this life and in the life to come. Okay? Gosh, I'm serious today, aren't I? I'm so, I'm just, this, this is a problem, guys. Okay? I love you. I don't want this. If you are saved, you say, I am saved, Mr. Bullard, but golly, I'm struggling. I, I'm, I'm, I'm Paul in Romans 7. The good that I want to do, I don't do, and the, the bad things I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. And Paul said, who will deliver me from this, this, this sin, wretched man that I am? And then he said, Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord for Jesus Christ, okay? I need the Lord. Saved, we need sanctification. We need to be growing in our Christ-likeness. Unsaved, you need Jesus. You need to accept Christ as your Savior, okay? I'm praying for you. I love you and I want God's best for you. Guard your heart. Guard what goes out. Don't be mean to each other. Don't. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt them. That is a lie. Words can kill. Don't be mean. Guard your heart what's coming in. Pornography is a gigantic issue. If you need help, there's help available. Talk to your parents. Talk to your youth pastor. Go to somebody and say, man, I am struggling. I have got a problem. I need this problem fixed. If you don't get that problem fixed, your future is not very bright. Okay? I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to ask uh, Blythe and Rayleigh and the rest of you guys to come on up. We're going to sing. Go ahead and come on up. I'm going to tell the story, and then I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to sing to end our chapel service. I'm sorry I'm a little late. Sorry, Mr. Buller. I'm going to scramble the schedule today, but I just really felt like I needed to share this today. So we're going to sing in just a minute. Thank you all for doing that. So you music folks, come on up here, whoever you are, and come on up. We're going to sing. I was at that conference. I want to hear this story. I want to hear this story. Listen to me. Don't put your notebooks up yet. Just listen to me, okay, please? I was at the conference. We were having lunch. I, I determined that I was going to meet some people, so I just found a table. It was a gigantic room, dining room with 900 people in it, all eating lunch. I just sat down at this table. I sat down by a college kid. His name was Josh. I can remember that name. So I sat down by Josh, just started talking to him. Josh, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? Georgia. So what are you doing? I go to college at Western Georgia University, west of Atlanta. I said, great, what are you studying? He told me what you studying. and said, so, uh, so why, why are you here? He said, well, I'm in, I'm in Stumo, and so I lead uh, Bible study groups and discipleship groups. And uh, I said, how big is Stumo on Western Georgia University campus? And he goes, oh, it's hundreds of kids. I love the Lord. He's... Um, he said, I, I, re- I lead a group of about 10 or 12 guys, kind of depends on their schedule, and, but we have, you know, 100 or 150 guys in our group, and then and there's young ladies, too, in Stumo. I said, so, so why are you at this conference? He goes, he said, pornography is a problem, Ms. Uh, Josh. He said, pornography is a problem, Josh. I'll never forget it. I said, um, I said well, well, Josh, out of, out of, you know, the guys, you know, you're 10 or 12, or even that bigger group of 100, 150 or so, so I said, like, you know, how many... 
how many use pornography? And here's what, here's what he did. He, he just said, he went. I, I thought, what did I say wrong? I said, I said, no, I said, well, I mean, you know, just, how, I mean, you know, how many guys use pornography, Josh? I mean, is, is, you know, most or half or what? He, he went, all of them? I went, oh. I, I didn't know what to say. And so he said, I, he said, and the leaders do too. We all struggle. He said, I've struggled since I was in high school. Now he's in junior high, 13 or 14. He said, I've struggled. And so I, we were just having this conversation at lunch, me and Josh. He was, he was like 22, 23, senior in college. Um, I was interested in what could be done to help kids not get there. So I had, I, here's what I did. I asked Josh a question. I said, Josh, I said, what? What would have helped you not get to where you are where you have to struggle with pornography? And they have, he had accountability partners. He had apps on his phone that share, you know, websites with some buddies of his. And so he had all kinds of things set up and help. And he loved the Lord. He wanted to, and he had made great strides against that. I said, Josh, what would have helped you not get to the place where you are? And I, I'll, I'll never forget it, I don't think. He, he's sitting there. He just, he just looked down. And, and he, he kind of, he did this at the table. He just, he just went like this. And then he just started. And he was just weeping. And I thought, I didn't mean to do this, okay? I was just asking a question. What could have been done to help you, Josh? And he looked up at me, he, and he, he said this to me. He looked up and he goes, if somebody would have just said something to me, if somebody would have just told me. And I thought, wow. Somebody needs to tell you guys that, that this is real and that God has better for you, okay? Our problem is our heart. The answer is the gospel. The answer is not a filter. The answer is not to throw your phone away. The answer is not, uh, you should do that. Camp doesn't take his phone to his room. He, we, we have filters on the phone. We, we do all that stuff, but that's not really the answer. If you want to get to pornography, you can. I don't care what filter you have. The problem is your heart. The answer is the gospel. Okay? Let me pray for us, and then we're going to sing, and then we'll be dismissed. Okay? Thank you guys for singing. Uh, let me pray. Lord, thank you for today. We pray that you'd work in our heart. And Lord, we need you. We pray that you would do in our hearts what we need you to do. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll follow you Jesus you're my I need 